This Mountain View, California-based fruit orchard symbolizes the former agrarian nature of the Silicon Valley predating the 1970s. Fruit orchards are no longer in existence in a region where the high technology industry has substantially elevated real estate values. This story, however, is not about real estate. It is about the invisible water flowing significantly under the land surface level. It is probable that these tree roots tap into the local groundwater table. It is also probable and likely the fruit from these trees is permanently tainted. There has been a steep price for the growth of technology and this tariff has been the extensive groundwater contamination of the Silicon Valley. The source of the poisoning has been attributed to the semiconductor manufacturing from the 1970s and 80s and their leaking storage containers holding solvents and degreasers involved in the cleaning process. Just behind this orchard is an inauspicious fenced-in water treatment station located in the parking lot of a light industrial building. These discrete stations are located throughout Mountain View and many parts of the Silicon Valley. They are used to process and filter groundwater. The treated water is then piped back into the ground or into a local sewer system. It is an ongoing process, yet it has failed to eradicate entirely the detrimental chemical traces. In front of the orchard, is the future, a pristine housing development under construction. It is one of numerous already completed, planned for, or in the process of being built. Mountain View has a substantial housing shortage to accommodate the high technology and related industries. Buildable land is scarce and only available at a premium. The light industrial building and parking lot behind the orchard and the housing developments pictured have been constructed on land that was formerly part of a federal Superfund project. The infamous leaking chemical storage tanks and containers necessitated federally sanctioned cleanup activities. These actions have included soil removal and relocation to federal hazardous waste facilities extensive subterranean drilling, and continual monitoring by the Environmental Protection Agency. This has gone on for nearly four decades. Has the cleanup process worked? The lethal chemical traces from such poisons as TCE, acetone, benzene, lead, and a host of volatile organic compounds, nearly unpronounceable, are for the most part at concentration levels under federal minimum levels. These subterranean waters, however, do not meet bathing, drinking, or even plant cultivation requirement levels, and quite likely they never will. There is also a major problem with vapor intrusion, which rises above the ground and has not been completely containable. Each and all pose serious exposure concerns towards public health. Yet the building and the development continue. The public risk and concerns become muffled. Cities like Mountain View and throughout the region have clearly stated their priority for the future. Theirs is forward progress accompanied by a semblance of disclosure. Buyer beware. The contamination of the Silicon Valley groundwater is the legacy of a nearly silent environmental collapse and catastrophe. The accompanying cancer spikes, birth defects, and health risk are important but seemingly not quite important enough to slow down progress. The region imports the majority of its drinking and use water from outside. The sourcing balance is composed from municipal and private wells, 
Is this a subject that should worry and concern Silicon Valley businesses and residents? The answer would seem self-evident. On the corner of 10th Street and Alma Avenue in downtown San Jose is an extensive paved parking lot filled with new cars awaiting dealer delivery. Next door is a paper recycling facility with perhaps the dirtiest of secrets. The lot is adjacent to San Jose State University's Spartan Stadium and a public ice arena across the street. For decades, the land parcel was a family-run operation that specialized in cleaning and recycling contaminated toxic barrels. Their dumping and discharge practices poisoned nearby creeks and local water sources until the company was forcibly shut down by the EPA in 1987. The owner was convicted of 10 misdemeanor polluting charges and died the year after before completing his jail sentence. He was the sole individual prosecuted for a Silicon Valley-wide tragedy that has affected hundreds of thousands over the past four decades. Blame has been eluded by the majority of the responsible parties. This is one history that most observers prefer to remain hidden and buried. History, however, as in soil strata, requires stages of development to ultimately define what constitutes significance. Once that enough time has elapsed for us to arrive at a deeper perspective, the role of the high technology manufacturing era will be more closely scrutinized. Will society one day conclude that the ultimate progressive gains merited the risks that we have imposed to haunt our future? This is a story about unhappy endings. In brief, the poisoning of the Silicon Valley's groundwater is a horror story that has not ended nor offers an immediate resolution.